thanks for joining me, Jesse. Um, I'm really stoked to to see you on on this year's uh, meteor season. And I think what I want to understand a little bit more about is your your connection to Texas um, and sort of your experience sharing that with folks. Um, so you guys did sort of a two part deal in Texas, fishing and hunting. Um, talk a little bit about um, you know who you are and 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 what you do and, and what part of Texas you're from and and uh, the kind of the kind of the, the timeline there. Yeah, I mean, I was born in. Uh... In North Texas, up, uh, I mean, people, people tease me, they call me, tell me I'm from Oklahoma sometimes, but uh, I was born within the borders of Texas and <laughs> Denton, which is, it's north of Dallas and Fort Worth. It's a little college town up there. Uh, but I lived in um, Austin, Central Texas for uh, 20, I think 22 years now. Okay. So for, for a good, good deal of time, I moved down here and, and loved it. It's just, it's got pretty much everything you could want, it's, mm -hmm. you know, there's no tree streams that are like crystal clear it's got big rivers it's got lakes coast is three hours away west texas is three hours away big deer in south texas three hours away south um so it, I mean, it's, a, it's a good spot um and i came down here about 22 years ago and um you know over the last um i think uh, 14 years um, we've we've had uh, our business die do which is uh, started out as a little like, roving supper club, just serving only ingredients that we could find locally. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd serve a lot of like game. Um, I remember the, se the second dinner we ever did, uh, we served uh, uh, bluegills to, to like 30 people. I tried I fried bluegills for 30 people all by myself, which is hard. Uh, there's a lot of bluegills. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I mean, we've always been pretty uh, fish and game heavy mm -hmm. and uh, opened the restaurant almost to the day. Um, Actually, our anniversary was uh, it was last week, our six year anniversary of the brick and mortar restaurant Nice. Uh, was last week. And, uh, and then for about the last 10 years, we've been doing what uh, the uh, new school of traditional cookery, right. which is, uh, you know, we take people uh, hunting and fishing and, and teach them how to process, cook, uh, preserve, cure, uh, everything, game uh, and fish, too. So uh, we've been doing that for for. Uh, yeah, I think we're going into our 11th season this year uh, doing wow. that. So and that's been pretty. That's everybody too. from you know new hunters to people trying to get into it for the first time, all the way to probably folks that just haven't haven't hog hunted or or want want to sort of understand that dynamic too, huh? Yeah, precisely. It's it's usually about a 50-50 mix of uh, new hunters and then people that hunt regularly but they just want to learn a little bit more about the processing butchery side of it cooking how to utilize stuff and it's it's, it's heavy on hogs because that's i mean that's the topic that, that's on everybody's mind and most people know how to deal with deer um there's just a lot of myths out there about hogs and, and everybody yeah. wants to know about how to how to handle those because we're i mean we're they're swarming down here so yeah. we got plenty didn't you tell me a couple of weeks ago when we were talking last it was you're saying that the, there's more hogs than people in the state of Texas? No, 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 no. I never, no, I didn't say that. Oh, how <laughs> no, many hogs are there? They estimate between, well, the estimation's funny. There's between two and four million hogs in Texas. So, um, That's a lot though. That's still a lot. Well, what I think is the most interesting thing about that number is the discrepancy yeah. between two and four million. That's two million uh, <laughs> difference right there. I just yeah. mean that nobody knows. We have no yeah. idea. Yeah. Uh, and, and, because you know they're just so reclusive and they they can hide so well. I mean, you can go you can go years. I mean, if you live in the city, you never see a hog like you will a deer just kind of cruising around. Um, but we're starting to see hogs more and more. We're starting to see them like they, they come into Austin now. I mean, it's it's regular to see tracks out on the hike and bike trails. They're in the city limits here. Um, like there's apartment complexes, but if there's anything like a little creek bed or something, there's gonna be hogs there. So right. uh, we've got quite a few here, yeah. That's incredible, man. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, sort of this, the, the, the idea of Texas as a hunting culture and, and where that's shifting and, and how that's shifting and if it, if it is shifting, you know, like, cause like, I guess like from our perspective, from Back in the day, right, it was always like these whisper, whisper, pull the trigger shows on these like giant white tail bucks behind fences and stuff like that. Is that the reality or what is your reality of Texas hunting? 
Well, I mean, it's all, it's what you make of it, you know? So there's absolutely uh, a lot of high fences. Um, there's absolutely a lot of like more canned style hunts. There's, um, and, and the, the feeder culture is huge here. I mean, it's mostly done over feeders. And um, I mean, they, they, they are kind of what they are. And there's a lot of places in Texas that would be exceedingly difficult to hunt because of the terrain. You've probably been to yep. some of them. Uh, like you get into South Texas, like <clears throat> you can't go into the brush. You just yep. get impenetrable. Yep. Uh, so getting getting animals out onto, uh, you know, senderas and, and roadways and stuff is the only way to, to hunt them. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's far different than, uh, you know, going after an elk for, for a week and hiking and, and sure. doing all that. I mean, it's it's vastly different, but also the, the volume of animals here is, is pretty profound. I mean, there's a lot of whitetails. I think uh, there's the, the highest concentration of whitetails in the world is in Central Texas. Uh, that we have no shortage of, of white-tailed deer, and they're, they're, they run a little small around here. Um, and then, you know, and then we have the hogs and stuff like that, and, and then exotics too. Right. Um, I, I'd say that, yeah, I mean, the, the culture does kind of, it, it's, a, it's a big buck culture. Um, it's a lot of a lot of feeders and then, and then high fences, but and it's just kind of the way that it is. And a high fence ranch can be anything from, you know, 20 acres to 20,000 acres. And so, if you put a fence around 20,000 acres, the argument about fair chase is, gets a little cloudy, I think, um, yeah. because that's, that's a lot of room uh, for them to roam. Um, and, you know, and it's it's pretty grain down here. You get into the, uh, like a couple centuries old cultural and geopolitical issues when you start arguing about uh, land ownership and fencing and stuff like that. I think mean, it's very similar to some of the issues that the West has always had. But yeah, right. it is very much ingrained uh, down here. Uh, I, I love stalking, um, hogs, especially. Um, uh, but I will also, um, I'll sit in a blind, you know, and right. shoot, shoot does cause I like to eat them a lot. And, yeah. uh, but I prefer getting out and walk. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of the way it's done down here. Many landowners don't want you to get out either. They want you to stay put in a you know, perceived safe place where, you know, you're shooting in one direction too. So yeah, you run into that yeah. too. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about like, you know, we talk about this exotic thing a little bit and I had the chance to come down and hunt Nil guy uh, like a year and a half ago. Right. Um, it's almost like a naturalized animal in Texas. It's been there so damn long and it's done so well. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, what a nil guy is and, and sort of your experience around them, both from a, like a hunting perspective, and then from a food perspective too, both like commercially and just personally, you know? Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, nil guys is, is, is a big thing for us, um, for us personally as, as a business and, uh, and as, you know, hunters, uh, they, they came to South Texas in the thirties. Uh, they were brought down there as a game animal and they, they thrived. Uh, and the nature of those ranches down there is really notable too, because there are no high fences or very, very, very few. Right. Um, so the nil guy can really roam freely and they pretty much established themselves from Corpus Christi all the way into Mexico along the coastal plain. Uh, and they, they go wherever they want and they are, as you said, you know, um, naturalized or nativized uh, animals. Um, you know, they've been here for almost a hundred years. Right. Uh, so, I mean, considering them like an invasive exotic, I mean, it's all semantics at that point. But, you know, hogs have only been here for 500 years. Um, you know, so there's, there's a lot of introduced species, pheasants, you know. Um, right. So they, they, they tend to, to be mostly on these big South Texas ranches, the famous ones, the King, uh, the Kennedy, the Eturia. And so they, they aren't readily accessible uh, to most people. They are on some public land. There's a Laguna Atascosa down in, uh, down near Brownsville, mm -hmm. uh, where you can, you can hunt them publicly. Uh, the pressure is pretty high because um, oh they are a, a very large, uh, very delicious animal. So uh, they're, they're pretty sought after. I mean, I think they're going to average five, 600 pounds. I mean, a big bull might be pushing seven or 800 pounds. Yeah, it's like a bull elk size, big, big yeah. animal, yeah. Yeah, 
they're huge and really i mean if, you've, if you know you've never seen one you need to get out there and google it because when i'm like it looks like a blue horse with horns you're like <laughs> it does <laughs> you know yeah. um, that almost looks like mythical to me you know the first yeah. time i was like man yeah. that goofy animal yeah and the way they run that just yeah. that lope uh, yeah. they're really cool yeah. they they can they're an interesting hunt they're a hard hunt i personally i don't i this is going to sound weird i don't like to hunt them I, I like to go with people that are hunting. I don't, I don't like, I just, I really enjoy watching no guy hunts. Um, like personally, I, I'd rather shoot, like have five deer than one no guy, if that makes yeah. sense. I just like spread it out a little more. Yeah. Um, or, or maybe a, I would shoot definitely a smaller, like cow no guy, I would be really into. But, um, but I really enjoy going on no guy hunts, like that one with Steve. That was right. really cool hunt. Yeah, talk uh, about that experience a little bit too. Just having, you know, like a pretty, I would say Steve, you know, has hunted all over the place, right? But the nil guy has to have been sort of one of the first experiences with like a quote exotic creature, you know, or maybe like a, a, a creature that's uh, from a different place, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was a fun hunt. I mean, he had a great guide. I was, um, I was there kind of, uh, you know, I was probably about 100 yards behind him in the guide uh watching the whole thing from the tree line um it was it was pretty cool i mean it got got it done pretty quick also right. but it's just just a, i mean you've been down there there's a yeah. lot of them yeah yeah getting close enough to one is is another thing they can be like see that that antelope feature right because it is sort of like the speed goat thing where like from two three hundred yards away they've got you pinned or even you know even further um but it was it was interesting to see how like the similarities there and and seeing how they sort of they mirror that sort of vision um, sense uh, that was that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, and I mean I really enjoyed taking those guys down to South Texas, which is just like a I mean whatever your conceptions of Texas are when you get into that specific area, the I mean the history and then the culture of that of that region is, is just really cool and very, very unique. These giant ranches um, that have these, you know, Indian antelope on them, free roaming for a hundred years. Uh, and then you get to hunt them and, and see all the other animals that are out there. I mean, just the almost tame bucks that are down there that is like, they get so little pressure. Right, they never see a human, right? I mean, well, they see humans. They just don't. They're not hunted very much. Yeah, I mean, exactly. People are, are hunting no guys. So these bucks are like literally walking up to the yeah. truck, um, and tons of turkey. There's some hogs, javelina, uh, and then there's some scimitar oryx out there too that are just roaming around. And um, you know, it was, it was a great hunt, I think. And I, I really, in talking to them, I was like, you know, I think a no guy hunt might be in order. I think it's kind of your speed and also be a good way to see just a side of Texas, one of the, you know, thousands of different representations yeah. of Texas that people never, never think of. They have like one idea of what, you know, Texas might be like. Yeah, right. This is going to throw everything off. So, yeah, it's a remarkable place, South, South Texas. And, and the coolest part for me when I was down there was just this, um, the vastness. That's what we were talking about a little, a little earlier. Just the, the vastness of the country, right? Where you could walk, almost like a hundred miles and never see a thing right it's it's continuous and then suddenly um you know there's there's a a nil guy herd running through a meadow and it's just like where am i you know? mm -hmm. it's yeah very different um, yeah talk about just a little bit about um how you fancy nil guy meat and how you use that sort of in your work outside of you know hunt fit the hunting and fishing world in, in the in the cooking world yeah I, I really enjoy it it's a it's got a like a, a pretty rich you know almost venison type flavor the texture is really nice i feel like uh, no guy has got a, a kind of inherent tenderness to it even the big bowls eat really well and fortunately we have um uh as a restaurant we have availability of wild no guy meat and i prefer that uh, because what that allows us to do is serve a truly wild animal that that wasn't even going to a corn feed or anything like that because they don't care about corn um and so their diets are, are very wild so all the you know 
wild uh, venison that we serve at the restaurants is actually, is Nilgai. Um, and it's a very sustainable source. And so they're hunted uh, under, with, the, with an inspector on site in South Texas. And so they're hunted um, and they go through all the inspection, they get the, the blue stamp and everything, uh, and they're processed in the field down there and then brought up to us. And so I think it's like, I mean, not only does, is the quality of the meat really good, but the, the, the source is really nice. I really prefer something that has been fed a real good wild diet and to be able to serve that in a restaurant is really unique. I mean, it, legally too, I mean, it's great that, that we're able to do all of these things is get people true wild game, like, you know, and it's been eating nothing but native grasses and forbs, things like that. Right. And and we can do it ethically and sustainably because it's a, it's just a really good meat. And so the nil guy, I think, is is very uh, very unique in that. And also, they're so big. I mean, when you when you kill one animal, that provides a lot of meat. And there's you know there's thousands of them down there, and so and they they need to be harvested. So uh, at, from a from a business restaurant perspective, they're great. And also, just from a taste perspective, they're they're amazing. They're very very good. So tell me a little bit about the perception from folks that are coming in the doors of your restaurant that have never been there before. And, um, you know, some of your staff is explaining to them um, this idea of meal guy and wild game. What's the reception like? Are people, people pretty stoked and pretty interested right away? Yeah, people are, people are into it. Um, you know, we, we established ourselves quite a long time ago about, you know, serving a lot of wild game. We also serve a ton of feral hog, you know, trapped hogs that are, that are killed under inspection and then brought to us. Okay. So, um, it's we're known for that and yeah. i think you know people come to our our place to eat like texan food i mean our our vegetables are from texas our milk's from texas you know it's, so it's yeah. you're coming here for an experience and i think people already kind of perceive texas as somewhat as a, a, a wild place in yeah. general and so they we, we don't disappoint by serving them that and it's not gimmicky you know it's not like ooh, you know this is like you know, South Texas antelope. It's just like, yeah, we make this with South Texas antelope. That's just the way it is. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, our breakfast sausage, that's, it's always been made out of that. And so it's yeah, just a matter normal. of course. Yeah, What's yeah. that? It's just normalized that way, which is really yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, and it's traditional. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, 100 yeah. years ago, that's that's what it was. So um, I think that people people like that. And it's when we don't, we don't try to paint it as any kind of, like, uh, novelty or anything like that. It, yeah, normalize, I think is the best way to put it. I want to talk just a little bit about two last things. One, I want to talk about uh, the new school tradition, traditional cookery and sort of your experience introducing people to hunting um, and your thoughts on sort of the best way to do that. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about the gear, uh, first sight gear and, and your experience in it, um, especially in Texas, which is quite frankly, some of the meanest shit <laughs> that you can find in the country when it comes to ripping and tearing. So um, chat a little bit about the new school of traditional cookery, what that means to you, how it got going, um, and sort of what the what the next steps look like for you in that program. Because I think it's a really interesting thing and it's very parallel to sort of where we're going uh, with our country with regard to how people eat and, and, and sort of go about their day. So. Yeah, I mean, we, we started it up, um, we were doing butchery classes on domestic animals, you know, usually pigs. Um, and then just had the idea of expanding that into uh, a hunt and then the butchery class. Like, why don't we just start at the very beginning of it um, and did a couple classes and they were just, they were total successes. You know, we had a, a great time. The clients really enjoyed it. Right. Um, they came away with a lot of really good knowledge. And then we started to, I mean, really the, the, the inspiration was the new hunters was, was yeah. people coming, uh, the, you know, like suburban moms and dads from Austin, just, you know, being like, you know, I, I, I built a chicken coop last year. I've been going to the farmer's market, you know, I grow my own carrots, but they, you know, you know, I'm an ex vegetarian, but I want to, I just want to, you know, see what it's like. And, um, and hunting with them, has just been the best you know over the years and we've taken probably hundreds of people hunting and half of them i'm sure were brand new hunters and they're the ones that get the most out of it you know they're the ones you know that are so excited and how uh, special it is to sit with somebody when they shoot their first hog or deer and then help them process it and break it down and 
um, they, they go home and, and then finish the, the process there and they send you these emails and pictures of all the stuff they make. I got a picture yesterday. I mean, get pictures all the time. Just, this is smoked sausage I made, you know, thanks, you know, and I'm like, cool, man, I'm so glad, you know, uh, to be able to empower people with that learning. And uh, that just kept us going, you know, and we didn't change the model too much. Um, you know, we were usually doing six people for our open enrollment classes. Um, and, you know, two nights, you know, three hunts and a big dinner and uh, three guy, you know, three guided hunts. And, yeah. um, and you know, we do a lot of private stuff. So a lot of times people will have us out to their ranch and we'll, we'll cook there and teach them whatever they want. You know, they're like, you know, we've done things like um, just match up every, every bird season, you know, so it's quail, dove, duck, and turkey all in the same weekend. You know, we found that, that, that awesome weekend that that happens awesome. and, and scheduled a school for them. And we're like, Hey, you know, made it kind of like a scavenger hunt. We're like, okay, guys, we need, we need two turkeys. We need, you know, a dozen quail go and they're, yeah, we could do that. And so, <laughs> you know, and then they bring them back and then just every day, that's all we'd eat. So, you know, we'd have turkey day, we'd have duck day and all that. Right. Uh, so just teaching people how to do that. Um, fishing as well, crabs, um, even some some foraging of uh, you know native and wild uh, vegetables and fruits and stuff like that you know like persimmons yeah. and, and nopales things like that. Uh, so it's been it's been very rewarding. This year we're going to strip it down a little bit. I mean you know this is yeah. pretty crazy time. So we're we're taking it down to uh, uh, two person groups. Uh, so and it's going to be very very hands on. I'll, I'll act as one guide, we'll have another guide, we'll have uh, a cook, and it's gonna be very much like, just a lot of hunting, a lot of processing, um, and then hopefully taking a lot of meat home, yeah. a lot of one-on-one -on -one skill building. Um, that's just the way this year, this season's gotta be. Yeah, it's been kind of a crazy, crazy year, I'm sure, for that, especially with like in-person experiences and and, yeah. uh, and group stuff, it's not probably the, the best time for for that and that's that's interesting though because I, I think that one of the things that you strike me as a guy that's very adaptable to this the current sort of whatever's happening right um so it's good to, it's good to hear that it's still happening because that's a that's an important thing for our industry and, and for sort of our per, love of pursuit um to be able to to continue to sort of train and and sort of bring to the fold this next group of people that'll that'll help advocate for for our, yeah. for our sport you know one one great part about it is is you know we 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 just kind of fretted over how we were going to logistically manage it and, and settled on we're not going to get in blinds you know so this yeah. year it's all it's going to be all stalking and i'm just like yes you know, just get out and walk you know that's really cool for me so awesome. um you know we're not going to do blinds this year like we're not going to sit in little boxes together which yep. we can't you know it's not not a great idea i don't know yeah, yeah. and then uh so so that kind of led to that and i think i'm pretty excited about that you know it gave me a chance to hone those skills a little better too uh definitely my preferred way to hunt anyway you know you get somebody out there on their first hog and you get you know you get pretty close to them sometimes you can get 20 30 yards away from a big group of hogs that's too busy eating to even look up and notice you and yeah. that guy's heart's just dur, 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 his <laughs> yeah. like i love that stuff so that's awesome. that'll be a good opportunity uh, yeah. for that but you know we're going to carry on and it's just like the educational component of, of all the businesses the nstc new school uh it's really important to me and I, I just i really really enjoy it and i just i love taking people out and i like i like to see the end results when they you know a year later check in and they're still using those yeah. and how profound is having your own source of protein right now i mean you know, you know, think back six months ago where we were all like, yeah, I don't have to go to the grocery store today. You know, it's pretty cool, you know, and meat shortages and things like that. And now, how like we refer to them as life skills before, but now it's like, yeah, we're serious. Yeah. And that's a really interesting point. I think, you know, we're, we're on the precipice of, of a, a cultural shift in which um, the sustenance part of this conversation is, is a reality. Um, Obviously, we're not like there, there yet, but I think especially for, for us in positions of, you know, within the industry or within the, the restaurant industry, there's a real chance to educate people to, to sort of empower them like you're doing. So um, kudos to you, man. That's a, that's a really cool program. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Um, 
Let's talk a little bit about the gear, specifically those damn Sawbuck pants, man. I know we talk about those all the time. You get it, man. You're like, if that guy says that word anymore, Sawbuck, <laughs> Sawbuck, Sawbuck, yeah. I got to tell you, though, like when I was down in, in on the Utura Ranch, is it Uturia? Is that how you say it? Uturia, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. So the cat claw, the mesquite, um, what else is in there? Those things, man, everything's trying to kill you in Texas. It's yeah, like, yeah. I mean, prickly pear. Yeah. yeah. Cat claw, mesquite, uh, the uh, um, uh, we yeah. you know, which is just like the, the little, the little mesquite that grows like tighter to the ground. It's yeah. got the same thorns. Uh, yeah, so, I mean the sawbucks are just they're they're perfect because um, they're first off they're light, um, and so in in a day where it can fluctuate between fifty and ninety, you know, which yeah. is not out of the question here. Uh, having some lightweight pants are really great, but also being able to just like barrel through brush and have that that protective um, you know layer in the front is uh, is great. Really like that, and then base layers. You know, it's just like I I, I do kind of this ridiculous double jacket. Uh, uh, I wear two of the same. What is the jacket? It's the uh, the probably that sawtooth. No. Or the catalyst jacket probably catalyst yeah yeah two of those and then just shed one you know yeah. with, you know at, at like 9 a.m or 10 a.m <laughs> yeah. to warm up and then i just got the next one still on um you know and then a, then a base layer t-shirt under that yeah um but it's yeah it's all about layers here for sure because it's especially in hunting season it just gets uh it generally starts out pretty cold in the morning but then by afternoon it can be you know where we typically hunt in south texas it's it's going to be 80, yeah. if not if not warmer, every day of the year almost, except yeah. for cold front. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great, man. I know those, those sawbucks were designed for exactly what you're what you're going through. And I think what's cool, too, is, like, you've done a great job of introducing new folks to the gear as well and, and understanding that, like, you know, it, it does make you more comfortable and able to, you know, continue the pursuit a little bit longer, um, which is good. So I appreciate that, too. And, and uh I'm, I, I'm excited to kind of showcase some of the stuff that's coming in the next couple of years because there'll be some stuff that's of interest for, for Texas for sure. Um, well, I appreciate you sitting down and taking the time, man, to talk through. I know um, the, the Netflix season of, of Meat Eater season nine is, is uh, going to be out and it'll be a two part episode, fishing and hunting in South Texas, which is um, something not a lot of, there's not been a lot of, a ton of content on that, on that subject. So I'm really excited for folks to see that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thanks for being a part, as always, man. You bet. I really appreciate it, y'all. Yeah, you bet. And we'll... Uh, great year. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll let the boys know, and we'll uh, we'll catch up with you soon. All right. Cool. Thank, thank you, Kevin. Thank you.